Bob Nightingale mentioned here in his article. This this was an interesting part here. And the San Diego Padres were like its own section in this article here. So I'm going to read this to you. If they have to make tough decisions, GM say, they wouldn't be surprised to see the Padres dangle shortstop Xander Bogarts and outfielder Fernando Tatis Jr. in creative deals to avoid trading Soto. They would like to move Jay Cronenworth, who signed a seven-year, $80 million contract extension in April. That's a loaded paragraph. Let's touch on the first part of that. If they have to make some tough decisions, GMs say they wouldn't be surprised to see the Padres dangle shortstop Xander Bogarts and outfielder Fernando Tatis Jr. in creative deals to avoid trading Soto. Okay, Xander Bogarts, I think a lot of Padres fans would be fine with him going elsewhere. But who is taking that contract? Nobody is going to take, what is it, 10 more years of Xander Bogarts? 10? They're not taking that. What team? Tell me a team out there that would take that contract. And you probably have to give that other team more on top of that. Probably top prospects. Do the Padres want to do that? So dangle Bogarts, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. And then Tatis, dangle Tatis, that's an insane idea. I mean, who would you rather have, Fernando or Soto? Soto's a great hitter. And I think some people might say Soto because they think that he's the better hitter. He gets on base and... The name, right? You traded so much for him. You want to give him an extension. I want Soto here long-term as well. But I'd rather have Fernando Tatis Jr. If you take everything into account, his ability to play amazing outfield, which he just started doing, by the way, if you need to, he can go back and play shortstop. He can play center. He can play right field. He could probably play left. He could play so many different positions. He can lead off. He can hit anywhere in the lineup. He has power, and I think next year he's probably going to have a monster season because he has a full off season, which he didn't have going into this past year. And his contract, his contract is going to be a bargain if you compare it to Juan Soto. Because let's, what is Juan Soto going to get in his contract? He's probably going to ask for five hundred million dollars. Don't know if he's going to get that, but let's say he gets four fifty, better than the Nationals' extension offer. And some team gives him $450 million. Would you rather have Soto, who might end up having to DH in a few years? Even if he doesn't, he's not a strong defensive player. Would you rather have him or at way more than Tatis's contract, which is what? Left on the contract, I mean, for Fernando Tatis. Soto, what? Four, again, at 450, let's say. Tatis. He's only going to be making a little over $11 million this next season. That's it. Soto's going to be making like $33 million. And I get it. That's just one year. But Tatis's contract is 14 years for $340 million. Juan Soto, for less years, is probably going to be way more money than that. Maybe it won't be less years, but it's going to be for way more money. It's probably going to be for over $100 million more than a guy that can play better defense than him defense, defense than him, and a guy that has power as well. Like, I'm sorry, dangling Tatis makes zero sense to me. What you get back in a Fernando Tatis Jr. trade, you're not going to win that deal. That contract is team-friendly. You look on that contract in five years, we're going to be laughing at how the Padres were able to extend Fernando Tatis Jr. like that. Sure, was it a risk at the time? Of course. But dangling Tatis is a stupid idea. And dangling doesn't mean that you trade him. I understand that. And Preller, his job is to look at every avenue. But I don't even want that out there that the Padres are dangling Tatis. I don't want that report to even come out at some point this offseason. Because I want the Padres to make it known that they are committed to Tatis. I don't want Tatis to have certain feelings going into this year. I want him to love the Padres and be all in to try to go win a World Series for San Diego. Trading Tatis, what does that do for you? It would piss off your fan base, one. And Fernando Tatis Jr. is one of the best players in baseball. Whoever you get back is not better than Fernando Tatis Jr. 
It's not. So, yeah, that. And then, okay, Jake Cronenworth. Moving to him. Padres would like to move Jake Cronenworth. Seven-year, $80 million extension in April. So, I'm not surprised that I'm seeing this. The San Diego Padres, I think at least some people in the organization, probably are sitting there now and are like, dang, why did we give this extension to Jake Cronenworth when we didn't need to do it? We should have saw the numbers. Offensively, his numbers were declining, and we still gave him that contract. When we didn't have to do it, still multiple years of control on his rookie contract, and Hassan Kim's going to be a free agent before Jake Cronenworth is. Wouldn't it make more sense to see if Hassan Kim continues to progress? And then you give him an extension before Jay Cronenworth. Wouldn't that make sense? That's probably what the Padres are thinking. And so if they can deal Cronenworth, maybe that allows them to go lock up Hassan Kim. Because Hassan Kim keeps getting better. And he can play second. He can play shortstop. He can play third. He can lead off. He can hit pretty much anywhere that the Padres need him to hit in the lineup. He is one of their most valuable players. And right now, who would you rather have, Hassan Kim or Jake Cronenworth? The answer is Hassan Kim. I love Jake Cronenworth, but just look at this past season. Right now, you would rather have Hassan Kim. There's no doubt about that. Plays amazing defense, keeps getting better with the bat. We saw some power with the bat from Hassan Kim. So I'm not surprised. The Padres, they're not in the best financial situation, according to reports. And if someone can take on Jake Cronenworth's contract, that gives the Padres much more room to spend. Now, is a Jake Cronenworth trade realistic? I don't really think so. I think it could happen if you trade Juan Soto with him to a team and say, hey, you got to take Jake Cronenworth and his contract as well. And that would save the Padres a ton of money, 30 plus million dollars for this year. And then however much money Cronenworth is making this year and for the rest of the contract, right? Which by the way, it's $80 million the rest of the contract because the contract starts this coming season. The contract didn't start last year. So I'm I'm not someone that's going to give up on Jay Cronenworth when the extension hasn't even started yet. I do believe that he's going to work his butt off to get better and not have that type of season again. But who knows what his positional future is. And Hassan Kim is, is someone that you want on this Padres franchise long term. I don't see it because I don't think Jake Cronenworth is going to get traded. But yeah, it doesn't surprise me that the Padres would like to trade Jake Cronenworth because what is Jake Cronenworth's ceiling? Is it higher than Hassan Kim's? Is he going to be able to bounce back this next season to where he was in what? 2021, 2020, 2022 in the postseason? Is that going to happen? And even if he does bounce back like that, at, if he's at first base, his value is still not that great because he's not going to give you Pete Alonso power or Freddie Freeman. He's, he, that's just not who he is. And you have Jackson Merrill coming up who could play short. He could play second. Xander Bogarts is here long term. You're not trading that contract. Like It just feels like positionally on this team, Jake Cronenworth doesn't fit this team that great right now considering if you want your best, most productive players on the field and you want to get a real first baseman, is Jake Cronenworth going to be getting paid $80 million from this Padres team to be a utility guy, to be Chris Taylor? Do the Padres want that? Or would they rather try to deal Jake Cronenworth so that they could get a much cheaper person to come in and be that utility guy? So that they can spend on, oh, I don't know, starting pitching, a real first baseman, bullpen help, Outfield, catching, like there's there's a lot of holes that they still got to fill on this team, and it doesn't seem like there's a lot of money, a lot of room to spend. So I still believe in Jake Cronenworth. I think he can bounce back. I just don't know what bouncing back actually means, like bouncing back to what he did in 2022. Well, he was still, if you look at the numbers, he was still declining, but his value was still fine because he was playing second base. He wasn't playing first base every day like he did in 2023. And he's coming off of that injury, so there's, I guess there's the question mark there. What team needs middle infield help 
but they're willing to take on an $80 million contract. Like that's a question that the Padres obviously have to ask themselves, especially the team, the, the, the second part of that, who's willing to take on that contract. That's a big thing. That's a big question mark. So we'll see what happens there, but no, I'm, you shouldn't be surprised that the Padres would like to trade Jake Cronenworth because I think that, a lot of people probably realize that that's probably not the best contract. And they didn't have to do it in the moment. I was, I love that Jake Cronenworth was locked down. I was super happy. He's, him and Musgrove are my two favorite players on the team. I love that they're here long term at the moment. But I do realize that they didn't have to do that. Just like they didn't have to do some other moves that they did. And now they're probably going to be a little bit hamstrung or trying to find deals that other teams don't want to do. They don't want to take on that contract unless Juan Soto is included with that. And then if you if you trade Cronworth and Soto, what are you getting back? How do you sell that to the fan base that, yeah, so we traded our best hitter, we traded someone that we just gave an extension to, but yeah, we're trying to go win it all in 2024. How can you convince your fan base of that, right? Um, and on top of that, let's say you don't include Soto and it's Cronworth and probably some other pieces. What are those other pieces? Top prospects? Padres don't want to deal with top prospects because they need those top prospects to come perform at the big league level because they have a bunch of other big contracts. So to offset it, and so that they don't have a $250 million payroll every year, which they're not going to, they can't do that. They've got to have the Jackson Merrills of the world, the Robbie Snellings of the world. They've got to have those guys come up and be productive on these cheap rookie contracts. So Jake Cronenworth, will he get traded? That's obviously a big question mark uh, this offseason. I don't see it happening. The Juan Soto stuff, that's a big question mark as well. There's a ton of question marks with this team. But yes, again, from Bob Nightingale, Padres, they would like to move Jake Cronenworth, who signed a seven-year, $80 million extension in April. 